welcome to the channel. Today we are going to discuss a slightly controversial topic, which is handling. Most people in the hobby seem to gravitate towards the fact that tarantulas are just observational pets, that they do not require us to handle them, they don't appreciate us handling them, nor do they grow to love us handling them. Although I fall under this category and not a huge advocate of handling tarantulas, I do believe in educating people on how to do it properly if they are going to do it. So in this video, I would like to really go over the mannerisms, the body language that tarantulas give you in order to kind of know how to read them if you are going to handle them. I do want to emphasize that if you are going to handle tarantulas, to stick with only the New World varieties, anything from North and South America and to avoid anything in the old world category, which would be Asia, Africa, and Australia. Each tarantula is individual. You can have three of the same species and each one of them can have a different temperament. So do not get into a mindset that, hey, I have a curly hair tarantula and it's gonna be sweet every time I see it. They, they again, are very, very much individual, just like you and I. So with that, let's get into this video. I'll show you some very willing to participate tarantulas and some not so willing tarantulas. Okay, first I wanna start with a tarantula that is definitely not going to wanna to be held. This right here is an Agena colada. And if anyone has ever dealt with one of these particular species knows that they have an insatiable eating response. So what I predict is that if I touch this tarantula with a paintbrush, which is how I always test their temperament is with this trusty little paintbrush here. I will pet the backside of their abdomen and using a paintbrush helps because that if they do turn around and they bite it, they do not hurt and break their fangs. And it's gentle enough where it doesn't disturb them too terribly bad. But this tarantula, I am going to assume, is going to turn around and probably bite it. Not gonna lie, probably gonna jump a little. She always gives me a little bit of a, a jump scare. So let's see what she's gonna do. If she doesn't do anything, I'm gonna be really surprised. No? Didn't actually go and bite it, but see how she is actually putting up a threat posture. She is throwing up her front legs, kind of. Can't really see from this angle, but she is showing her fangs a little bit. She's not pulsating them. You will see that sometimes where they're just trying to give you every indication of like, hey, I will bite you if I have to, but look at me, I'm big. Just please leave me alone, go away. They normally don't want to incite kind of an interaction. Like even out in the wild, if any kind of animal can, they usually will go away. They usually don't want to actually fight because the risk of getting hurt is too high and they don't have doctors running around helping them. So that's a threat posture. Any tarantula gives a threat posture, definitely do not attempt to handle. They're not in the mood. Now we are going to move to a B bomai or Brachypelma bomai. This girl, I would consider a bomai a good beginner friendly tarantula and most brachypelma I feel like you can handle them until their juvenile stage but after that they tend to get very hair kicky in my experience. This girl is a notorious hair kicker. She always thinks the world is ending. As you can kind of see if I zoom in a little bit further her abdomen right here is bald. I've never handled this tarantula and she's kicked off that much hair. She just thinks the world is falling every time. Okay, so I'm going to give her the same treatment, give her a little pet on her abdomen. I assume because again, she is a notorious hair kicker that she will do that. See, straight up just kicking hairs all over the place. Do it one more time so you guys can see it. There she goes. Those hairs, sometimes you can see them when they really kick off a ton of them. She is kind of bald, so she doesn't have anything to kick off anymore. But those hairs will get up in the, the air. They'll get on your skin. They're kind of like fiberglass. They're not comfortable. If you do get them on your skin, um, a little bit of duct tape will get them out sometimes if you get them early enough. Some people are not affected by them very much. Other people will rash up, get a little bit of blisters on them. That is why I always wear gloves, just to be on the safe side. So now we've gotten a threat posture and we've gotten a little notorious hair kicker here. 
Okay, this is my Xanthia species blue female. Why I want to show her, A, she's beautiful, and B, she's not too crazy of a hair kicker, but she loves to show her butt and put it up in the air. That is another sign. They don't have to kick the hairs to tell you, hey, I don't want to deal with it. Sometimes they will just warn you with, hey, I've got all these hairs on my butt. I'll stick them up and I can't kick them if you keep pushing me. So let me see if I can get her to put her butt up like she normally does. See, straight up in the air. Not kicking, but she will tell you everything about it. She is ridiculous with her butt in the air all the time. Getting a picture sometimes of her is ridiculous. Oh, nope, she ran off to her high now. Pushed her a little bit too far. Okay. Okay. This last one here is the tarantula I normally would bring to shows because he is rather chill. He always has been. His name is Carl. He is a Gramostola Polkripes or a Chaco Golden Knee. He has never giving me a threat posture, never kicked hairs at me, but I don't still trust him. I would never stick my hand just straight into his enclosure. I always would treat him exactly like the other ones that I knew were gonna be sassy with the paintbrush because I can handle this tarantula a thousand times and he can have one bad day. Just like you and I, we don't always have great days. We don't always have days we wanna interact with other people. So you have to respect that he is an animal that has his own wants and desires just like we do. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. Pet him a little bit on his abdomen. Doesn't seem to really care. Obviously just gonna walk away a little bit. Let's see if I can get him in the frame here. Okay. He's in this posture you see him in. He's kind of in a stress curl where he is trying to look as small as he possibly can because he doesn't want to be noticed. Any any kind of predator, they usually see things off of them moving. So if he can scrunch up and look as small as possible and not be noticed, he's safer that way. That's how he feels. So Obviously we can see him, so I'm gonna see if I can get him to move. He is wandering around. Let's see. Being that he's going in this direction, I'm gonna kinda put my hand right here. And I'm going to try to hurt him. Of course he's gonna go the opposite way. He's just gonna wander out. So I'm gonna put my hand here and just kinda let him casually do his own thing. Slightly motivate him a little bit. But I would never just put my hand in there and try to grab him like a hamster or something. He is definitely not a cuddly little hamster. Okay. And you just kind of let them do their own thing. Guide them along. You want to keep them, if you do handle them, keep them very low to a surface because occasionally they will get weirdly suicidal and just run off. <laughs> um, and any kind of fall from any significant height can be fatal to a tarantula, so you don't want to risk it. I do also recommend if you are going to handle any kind of tarantula to not handle them any further than how big Carl is here. He is about a sub-adult. He will get probably seven or eight inches. He's probably four or five now. Because the bigger they get, the more fragile they get. Juveniles and slings bounce a little bit better, just like our children if they fall down they are more inclined to get up and run off as an adult we don't tend to do that as much <laughs> just again do it let him just kind of do his own thing don't get crazy with it don't try to put him on your face or anything ridiculous because again they do have those itchy hairs and you don't want that anywhere close to your eyes we all love the movie home alone but putting a tarantula on your face is never a good idea so He's just chilling. Never kind of motive there. And the way you would get him back in there, sometimes he's a pain in the butt to try to get him to go back into his box. Come on. You just kind of herding cats here and gently telling him, hey, which way to go with a paintbrush. I would never motivate him with my hand because he can automatically just randomly get sassy and want to bite down on something. So kind of tell him which way to go with your paintbrush. A good way to try to get them to stay in without running back out is just kind of put your paintbrush as a, a stopping point for them. So you'd be surprised at how hard it is sometimes to get them to just stay back in there. Once they get out, they want to wander sometimes. And I hope you found that this video was helpful. If you have any comments on whether you agree with handling or you don't agree with handling, I'd love to hear it in the comments. And please do like, share, subscribe.
Thank you so much for watching.